Hi, everybody. We're going to have our next talk now, and it will be on the exit of animal production by Friedrich Kirsch. Now, Friedrich is committed to a just and ecological world for all and the liberation of animals. He is active in the movements for animal liberation and climate justice. Among others, he is actively involved in the German intersectional alliance Gemeinsam gegen die Tierindustrie. In his talk today, Friedrich will discuss why the animal rights movement should not rest on maximum demands and what criteria for real revolutionary politics against the animal industry could look like. So welcome, Friedrich. Stage is all yours. Thanks, Alexa. Yeah, well, you already introduced me so good. I can uh, skip the first slides, I think. Um, welcome to my talk on uh, revolutionary pragmatism beyond the closure of all slaughterhouses. I'm Friedrich Kirsch, I'm a grassroots activist based in Germany, so my thoughts are mostly with a background from Germany, and uh, I'm active in the animal liberation and climate justice movement, among others, in the Alliance Gemeinsam gegen die Tierindustrie. What motivates me for this talk are the following two questions. How to end animal production and establish a solidary, ecological, and just agriculture system? And secondly, how to alleviate the suffering of the animals that are exploited now and will be in the years to come. We only got uh, roughly 25 minutes until the Q&A, so uh, we got to uh, dive when it, right into it. Uh, we can't cover everything, but I hope uh, this talk benefits all of you. I will propose a scheme for revolutionary real politic, uh, more on this later on. As a disclaimer beforehand, this is all work in progress. So don't expect it uh, to be uh, completely finished by now. I want to contribute to an ongoing debate on this uh, in the movement and want to discuss it with you. So your feel feel feedback is highly welcome, your criticism. Um, yeah, more on this later on. To begin with, I uh, brought with me a coordinate system. Uh, caution, it's overly simplified, it's just a model. It can't cover everything regarding the animal movements, but I think it's a model that fits today's discussion. We have two axes. One is the vertical one between utopia and realpolitik. And the other axis, the horizontal one, is the one between system reform or focus solely on animal exploitation and on the right-hand side, system change intersectional. Some of you might not know the term realpolitik yet, so let me quickly explain that. According to the dictionary Merriam-Webster, realpolitik is politics based on practical and material factors rather than on theoretical or ethical objectives. So realpolitik uh, is really um, concerned with uh, current um, conditions and how to uh, go on from there with uh, reforms, basically. Uh, it's actually from German, so I'm from German and I can uh, really announce it uh, as in German, Realpolitik. I hope uh, this uh, doesn't um, um, bother you. Uh, I hope uh, I will not get confused myself with all this English and German. But anyway, let's get back to the coordinate system. This is the coordinate system. And now let's see how I would arrange the different animal movements in there. We've got the welfareism movement, traditional and modern on the bottom left in the corner of system reform and realpolitik. We've got the animal rights movement in the top left, uh, a movement that is considered with uh, really far reaching demands, utopian demands, but still uh, is uh, focused uh, mainly on animal exploitation. While on the other hand, on the right top side, the animal liberation movement really is a system change movement. It's, uh, and its demands are intersectional and also considered with other uh, exploitations other than animal. In my opinion, we've got a problem. Uh, the animal liberation movement and partly also the animal rights movement is uh, really utopian and uh, its utopia is far away still, unfortunately. And what's uh, most important, we are lacking a plan how to get there. On the other hand, the welfareism is trapped in the system and lacks radicalism they have a plan for realpolitik, but I don't believe that uh, the welfareism um, concept is getting us anywhere near our utopia. So that's what we want to discuss today. 
we want to discuss the bottom right part, the part um, with realpolitik and system change intersectional demands, which I will call realpolitik animal liberation or revolutionary welfareism, if you want. The focus in the following will be on the animal liberation movement and uh, its um, considerations of revolutionary realpolitik, but the concept also applies to animal rights and welfareism. So um, I hope you all gonna benefit from this talk. What is revolutionary realpolitik that I'm talking about? The term is uh, been coined by Rosa Luxemburg, the revolutionary that lived uh, in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, she coined it, um, I will freely adapt it from her as revolutionary realpolitik, as practical politics with transformation oriented objectives and means, meaning that um, we are concerned with realpolitik, with practical politics in the here and now, but we're not only looking on reforms that merely um, um, make anything better at all, but we always have in mind that we have a bigger goal, a revolutionary goal, and we look for transformation oriented object objectives and means to get closer to that revolution. So we combine and incorporate the reforms into our revolutionary goals. And what does this mean for the animal liberation movement? I believe that realpolitik and animal liberation should really be a topic and um, some actually pursue some revolutionary realpolitik in parts. So there are groups and parts of the movement that are considered with reforms that have revolutionary potential. But I believe there is no movement internal discourse on this. We, we don't really talk about it in, uh, in uh, gatherings, uh, in bigger uh, settings, and uh, especially it's not part of the movement's core profile. So if you ask someone, what's the animal liberation movement, they won't talk about real politic, but yeah, that's what the revolutionary, revolutionary part is um, the main profile of the movement, which is uh, what we need, right? We have to get to the utopia, but still we have to talk about real politic as well. Because if we don't talk about um, reforms and realpolitik, we fall short both politically, because we don't have a, have a concept from here to utopia, and regarding our solidarity with the animals that are suffering now in the years to come. Because if we just say uh, we want to end all explo exploitation completely, and we don't want to be um, concerned with reforms, we, we don't get in touch with the animals that are explo exploited still and will be in the years to come before we end animal production. So before we dive into the concept for realpolitik animal liberation and how it looked like, at least uh, what I propose, let's have a look at other movements. I mean, they have the same questions as we, maybe they have other utopias, um, slightly others, but still they have the same um, discussion on reforms and revolution. And I want to introduce two um, organizations from Germany. One is uh, the FAU, the Free Workers Union. It's an anarcho-syndicalist union from Germany. What they say in their self-conception is, we do not reject political reforms if they bring real improvements and are not in conflict with our goals. However, we reject reformism as an attitude that does not attempt to fundamentally change the existing conditions. So I hope you get what, uh, how they uh, approach this issue. They incorporate both the reform and the revolution and they go for real improvements. Same goes for the International Socialist Organization, a socialist movement from Germany. They state, we fundamentally support all demands that seek to improve the living conditions, but in no case do we limit our own demands to what is considered feasible or realistic within the system. I would say such deliberate, deliberative statements on reforms are very rare in the animal liberation movement. If you find some animal liberation folk, folks talking about reforms, it's mostly, no, we wouldn't do any reforms. We are not the reform guys. The reform is uh, what welfareism is concerned about. Um, and I wouldn't say that International Socialist Organization or the FIU are anywhere near a welfareist stance. But still, they look at reforms, they incorporate the reforms that have revolutionary potential in their programs. So I think that's what we need as well. Realpolitik animal liberation then could look like 
a political program which in the short term reduces the exploitation of the animals, in the medium and long term makes the end of animal production more achievable and without compromising the revolu revolutionary intention. So always having this tr transformation or transformation orientation as Luxembourg talked about in mind. I guess this is quite abstract. So let's try to bring this down to concrete uh, settings. Let's use a, a diagram. I hope this helps you. I'm a diagram person, so it helps me to visualize and illustrate a problem. On the top, we have a set of potential reforms. I guess you come along with a lot of them. In the bottom, we want to got, get to the realpolitik animal liberation, and we get there through political discussion. For this political discussion, we, on the one hand, need criteria of revolutionary realpolitik that we base our discussion on, but we also have to consider scientific findings and specific circumstances on which the reforms shall be applied. Um, why do we need uh, scientific findings at all? Well, I believe that the discussion on reforms that we have right now is shaped mostly by feelings and morals. I think feelings and morals are important, but uh, we can't uh, just uh, uh, adjust our agenda only along for feelings and morals. We have a, to have a clear grounding in scientific findings. And I think that's what we're missing right now when we're talking about reforms. And we are geared to look at a big picture. As an utopian uh, movement, we always have all the problems in mind and the big um, solutions. But when it comes to reforms, and we're talking about reforms uh, when we talk about realpolitik, we have to look at the details because they matter as well. A reform can have uh, very different um, results consider concerning different specific circumstances, uh, regions or um, uh, uh, so society trends and stuff like that. So you really have to consider this. And now let's jump into the criteria of revolutionary realpolitik. Beforehand, I want to say this needs continuous refinement and updating. So I, I brought along a, um, a proposal for such criteria of revolutionary realpolitik, but this is only a proposal. It needs to be discussed and, of course, needs to continuously uh, be refined and updated because um, uh, circumstances um, uh, and scientific findings and uh, political experiences, they uh, also refine. So I think you could uh, categorize the criteria and must criteria in short and should not and must not criteria. Um, the must criteria being the most important and the must not criteria uh, being the ones that you really can't uh, meet because otherwise uh, it's not a good reform for, for animal liberation. The must criteria are linking to real conditions, be viable and improve the basis for animal liberation. The first two criteria are what a reform is, um, is making up. So a reform needs to be linked to real conditions and be viable, otherwise it's not a real reform that you can uh, conduct. Um, linking to real conditions means uh, considering uh, the, um, the beliefs in society, the material and economical um, uh, circumstances, um, and yeah, what makes up uh, the situation. And being viable means that you have actually need to be able to um, conduct the reform as proposed. Um, uh, it, it can't be all too expensive or um, it can't um, uh, um, require specific technologies that are not on our hands. So that's what uh, reforms look like. And it, of course, must improve the basis for animal liberation. That's uh, what our goal is. And that was what is what the reforms also have to contribute to, right? So this is the most important ones. The short ones are, are a little bit um, more differentiated. Um, I believe that uh, revolutionary realpolitik needs to alleviate the suffering of the animals, the animals that are suffering now and will be in the years to come. I think that this is a quite a big discussion in the movement between animal rights liberation and animal welfareism. Um, and I believe that the rights and liberation movement also have to look at how to alleviate the suffering of animals. That's what solidarity looks like, right? Um, our reforms should be compatible for other progressive movements. We, have, we will look uh, later on uh, more into this. It should increase the social transformation potential of uh, our movement 
because, um, well, we want to change a lot as an animal liberation movement. And uh, it's not only animal liberation, but so many other social struggles. And for that, we have to empower ourselves and take back power that is now um, amongst the wealthy, amongst uh, the capitalists. And we as uh, people, we have to increase our social transformation potential and reforms should contribute to this. And last but not least, reforms should make animal production less profitable. Um, I guess um, that's um, quite um, apparent, considering that we are living in a capitalist society and um, um, profit is uh, all what matters right now. And we want to change that as well. Be concerning the should not criteria, um, I believe we should not go for reforms that oppose programs of other progressive movements. Of course, some other progressive movements have um, um, might not uh, be cons um, might not like all reforms that are helping us uh, for animal liberation. So, uh, I think it's not a must not criteria, but it at least is a should not criteria because we want to fight alongside uh, and um, go as far as possible together. Now to the must not criteria. Con uh, reforms must not reinforce social acceptability of animal exploitation. That's one thing that uh, might distinguish uh, many reforms from those welfare reforms that uh, sometimes even reinforce social acceptability by making animal exploitation less visible. And it must not contribute to reproduction of capitalism. Later, more on this. And maybe more criteria. You see uh, the, uh, the lower box. It's only work in progress. So let's apply it to a set of potential reforms. Um, regarding an animal production, there are so many reforms that come into your mind. I just compiled a set of it, for instance, video control in slaughterhouses, welfare labels, ban of live animal exports. And we're going to look at a few of them and see how our scheme of revolutionary realpolitik would filter those. Let's have a first look on ban of animal life exports. Live animal exports, um, well, I believe they fulfill all of the criterion and only one criterion, it's a should criterion, I'm not quite sure if it's fulfilled, it's the increase of social transformation potential. Because if we ban live animal exports, it doesn't empower us as a movement or as society, but rather sticks to the existing system, but only makes one uh, exploitation um, uh, mechanism gone. It links to real conditions, is viable and improves the basis for animal liberation, of course. So the mass criteria are met and the other criteria are also no problem. Which other movements could be compatible with this reform? I have the animal welfare movement in mind, of course, but also the food sovereignty movement. So the movement of peasant farmers, especially in the global south, uh, they definitely have interest in banning live animal exports. So this could be a reform that we could fight along those and potentially other movements. Another reform that uh, would definitely fit into uh, revolutionary realpolitik as I have it in mind are effective labor rights for meat workers. I know this has been a um, uh, discussion and a controversy in the movement before, but let's look at the criteria. It links to real conditions um, because uh, meat workers are uh, exploited all over the world, not only in Germany or uh, only in the global north, but all over the place. It's viable because we have the labor rights um, tools at hand. Um, in other sectors, the labor rights are much better than in the meat sector. So I think it's totally viable. And it improves the basis for animal liberation because we take away power from the capitalists, from the owners of the corporations, take it into the hands of the workers uh, effectively if the labor rights are suitable. And uh, by this, we have better tools in order to organize resistance and fight alongside the workers. I'm not quite sure if it directly uh, relates to an alleviation of the suffering of animals. That's why I uh, rated this with a question mark, but I definitely believe that um, the other criteria are met. Which other movements are compatible with this uh, reform? You see it on the right hand side of the slide. I believe it's of course the unions, the worker unions, but also citizens initiatives. We've got uh, experiences with this in Germany already 
and it's the anti-racism movement because many of the meat workers, especially here in Germany, are um, uh, coming here for work from other Eastern European countries and experience racism here. And uh, the anti-racism movement is fighting for effective labor rights for meat workers. So this is definitely part of a revolutionary realpolitik program of the animal liberation movement. Another uh, reform that I believe is not part is the joint campaigns with big corporations. Some folks of the animal rights movement might um, empower us to do this, but I definitely don't believe that this is part of revolutionary realpolitik. You see it yourself, uh, many of the criteria are not met. And uh, most important, the must not criteria contribute to reproduction of capitalism because capitalism is one of the uh, systems that's uh, most um, influential on how increasingly much the exploitation of animals is and we must not contribute to reproduction of capitalism. That's why we definitely shouldn't fight alongside big corporations. It doesn't help us our goal. Well, this will bring us to a first potential sketch of a re revolutionary realpolitik animal liberation program. We would go for the ban of live animal exports, effective labor rights, I believe also a ban of feed imports from the global south, and definitely not campaigns for organic meat, no welfare labels, and no joint campaigns with big corporations. The other reforms would have to be discussed together. Uh, I guess you also have uh, so many thoughts on this. We can't cover it in only this talk. Let's get to the bottom line then. I believe the question is not, is it a reform? Most often this question is framed in the animal liberation movement. Is it a reform or not? If it's a reform, we don't go for it because it doesn't fit into the liberation um, stance. But I believe the animal liberation movement should definitely lay off its general defensiveness against reforms. We need debates on reforms. We have to discuss it. And there are so many reasons for it. We need a concept and we can only get there if we debate real, real politic, the real s conditions that we are facing now and get a concept from now to our utopia that we can work on. But not least, we need these debates regarding the suffering of the animals that are exploited now and will be in years to come. I believe the animal liberation movement has no concept on how to help the animals that will suffer and die before we end animal production. And that's why we need a revolutionary realpolitik uh, especially. Many folks might say, well, it's realpolitik or revolutionary, isn't it? I think it's not realpolitik or revolution. I think both can be incorporated very well. Um, we can compile programs where we say, we are an animal liberation movement. We want to close, close all slaughterhouses. We want to end speciesism. That's what we're fighting for. That's what, what we want to get, uh, I'm convinced. But uh, that doesn't mean we have to uh, stop there. If we want to get there, how do we get there? We want closure of all slaughterhouses. Therefore, we want to ban all live animal exports. We want effective labor rights for meat workers, and so on and so forth. And if you look at other movements, they are quite uh, successful, I believe, in doing so. Look at the no border movement, um, uh, the movement for uh, um, helping refugees. Of course, they say, we don't want borders around Europe. We want to support the refugees, but they don't stop there. They go on the med into the Mediterranean Sea and um, rescue them. They go to the camps here in Europe and bring them food and uh, help them with the health. So I think we definitely need to incorporate those both. We need to look at realpolitik and we need to look at revolutionary approaches to realpolitik to contribute to our revolution. Well, if we had more time, we could actually discuss this realpolitik. In Germany, in the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis, we came together um, um, and we compiled a text, a text which measures would be now definitely needed in the phase of the COVID-19 crisis, as all the governments all around the world compiled uh, many measures, but we were convinced these are not the ones that we really need. And we came up with quite an extensive um, set of political de demands. It was a program. You can look it up on the internet. Here's the link, tierbefreiheit.org slash corona. And it was signed by over 30 groups from the animal liberation and animal rights movement. Um, it was revolutionary realpolitik 
and I think it was really interesting. So I would love to um, uh, show it to you now, but we don't have the time for it. Check it out. It's tierbefreier.org slash corona. Well, and if you're um, convinced that uh, going alongside with other movements is uh, as important as I stated is uh, with my revolutionary realpolitik approach, I can uh, warmly uh, invite you to the Alliance Together Against the Animal Industry that I'm active within. It's a German-based intersectional alliance made up of uh, animal rights and animal liberation groups, but also climate justice groups, citizen initiatives, um, uh, environmental justice movement, and so many more. And we are doing, uh, we are action oriented. Um, our main goal is to have a big mass action of civil disobedience in 2021 alongside a Corona compatible camp or anything like that. We wanna go where the animal exploitation is uh, coordinated and managed. We wanna go to uh, the, the, the main headquarter of a big animal industry company and want to block it together with with many many hundred people so um, if you're interested in that and want to join in uh, contact us it's gemeinsam minus gegen uh, minus gegen minus d minus t industry dot org here's the link even if you're not from germany uh, contact us uh, support us from abroad or join your own mass action of civil disobedience in your country and with this i want to end my talk uh, here you see my contact it's Friedrich score Kirsch at riseup.net. Feel free to contact me later on. And now I'm happy to hear your comments, your feedback, or your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Friedrich. Uh, and especially thanks for the diagrams and making it so understandable uh, and visual, your um, revolutionary, um, no, that was not a revolutionary realpolitik, right? So um, we have some questions. The first one is, do you think that the revolutionary realpolitik is an empty biotope which could be populated or are several players already there? As I said before, I believe that there are uh, parts of the movement that uh, are engaging uh, with revolutionary realpolitik. I believe um, there's definitely a lack of a movement debate on it and uh, on a we need a program that's basically uh, um, very extensive and uh, those that are existing are merely a uh, part of a big picture so i wouldn't say there's none but there's definitely need for more great next one is what would revolutionary realpolitik look like in legal representation for animals that's a good question. One of the potential reforms that I have in mind uh, is the one that's already discussed. Um, it's um, rights to sue for uh, animal rights uh, groups. So basically what that means is that uh, organizations that are registered at the state get the right to sue for, um, uh, for animals at the, at the courts. For instance, if they uh, find out that animals are exploited in a slaughterhouse, which is not according to uh, the animal welfare uh, laws, they can legally go to court and uh, uh, sue the state or uh, the operator of the slaughterhouse. And I think that this is, this is one example of um, um, a reform that has some revolutionary potential because we actually empower ourselves. We take back uh, power from the state and from um, other corporations and have the power to stand up for the animals also on court. So I guess this is one example that has already been implemented in, uh, in some places and other examples are maybe, um, yeah, maybe let's stick to this one. All right, thank you. Uh, next one is, you said that joint campaigns with big companies doesn't fit in the revolutionary realpolitik plan. Can you give examples of this, obviously without shaming current campaigns? Well, I've been to the International Animal Rights Conference last year, and there were at least two or three talks that were referring to this impossible burger, or what is it? I, I, I don't remember the name anymore, there are so many. And uh, people were actually saying, we, we have to support uh, these initiatives of uh, these big companies uh, pushing uh, these uh, very uh, tasty and um, meat-like vegan products. Uh, this is a big chance for us. And I think this is one good example, other being um, 
companies um, 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 celebrating big meat industries like Cargill or uh, Wiesenhof from Germany or Tönnies that are investing in vegan products uh, and lab grown um, meat. I think uh, this is, uh, has already some proponents in the movement and I think that's definitely not where we want to go. All right, thank you. So the next one is a bigger one. Uh, it's a few questions in one. I'm just going to read it out. Uh, I definitely agree that veganism should be an anti-capitalist movement, but there are many campaigns looking at veganizing corporations like KFC, McDonald's, etc. If we were to focus only on anti-capitalist work for veganism, what do you think would be the evolution of the big corporations? I'm going to go with that one first, and then there's another one in connection to that, but I'm just going to leave you with that one first. All right. Yeah, so as I already said, I don't have uh, the solutions at hand already. I want to discuss it with the movement together uh, because I think together is so much uh, more clever than uh, I could ever be it. But uh, let's, let's try to answer this anyway. Um, I believe one potential could be to, um, to um, support the workers in uh, those um, uh, companies so that they get more power um, from uh, uh, the, from the capitalists, basically. Um, another one could be the socialization of such uh, companies so that it's not anymore um, a player uh, that is registered as a corporation, uh, but rather is organized uh, um, from, the, from the people by themselves uh, democratically. Uh, so we can have a democratic um, discussion on what we want to produce and how we want to distribute it. Uh, this would basically uh, both go into the direction of decommercialization of the food sector. So we want to say it's not a market business how we produce food and how we distribute it because it's, uh, it's a basic um, need of all the people that are living on this planet. So why should it be a corporation that is deciding what is produced and how it is distributed? So I would definitely say we need to democratize uh, the food sector and instead of uh, veganizing KFC and McDonald's, let's um, tear down KFC and McDonald's, let's democratize uh, the business and let's take it in our hands. What a statement. <laughs> so uh, next one, or in connection to that actually, is um, it was emphasized that there should be more focus on cell-based meat in an earlier talk. What is your thought regarding capitalism and this alternative? Well, cell-based meat is not necessarily something that's uh, only viable in uh, capitalism. I'm actually quite skeptical if uh, whether cell-based meat is uh, the future of the movement. Um, um, I'm coming from a background where I'm also concerned with climate justice and the climate justice movement has uh, been discussing technological uh, solutions for societal problems all along. It's been the nuclear power plants, it's been uh, uh, CCS carbon storage systems and so on and so forth. And uh, we see that it's not working. Uh, those technological solutions, they are only contributing to, um, to the ongoing uh, debate on uh, how to uh, rescue a capitalist society. And I definitely need, think that we need more, um, more societal solutions uh, and less technological solutions. And uh, having said that, I still believe that uh, there are uh, potential paths uh, to lab-grown uh, meat that is not in capitalist society, but I'm not sure if uh, our resources are better um, invested in lab-grown meat than in uh, shutting down the uh, animal industry and uh, establishing democratic uh, solutions.